Hey, it's Jeremy here. In this tutorial, I want to be showing you how to create this cool dog icon in Illustrator CC. So you can see here, it's the year of the dog. I don't really celebrate it, but you know, it's a cool idea just to do some nice dog icons. And you can create whatever dog you want, a Border Collie, a Corgi, you know, Jack Russell, whatever it is, whatever your favorite dogs are, and you can, you know, make a nice little icon. So you can see here, we want to make something like this. And you can see sort of the process I went through. I found a nice reference image. And from that, we built like a box to put the icon within that. So we can keep it consistent with all our icons. And then you can see he went for a stroke and just colored it simply. So what we're gonna do first up, you wanna find a nice reference image. So go to Google, type in dog breed and the name and type in front view as well. It will help you find a nice shot that's you're gonna be able to trace over. So you wanna find a nice with good lighting that you can see. And I picked this one here. I just right clicked and copy image and I just jumped into Illustrator and pasted it in. And you can see here I selected it and I put it on its own layer and called it sketch. I, you can double click on the layer. You'll get this option called template. You can click that and it will dim the image to 50% or whatever you put it. You can put 40% if you want, but I leave it at 50. I press OK and it will dim it like this so we can trace over it. So I'm just going to bring it over here a bit and lock that layer. And now on top of this layer, I'm going to press M for the rectangle tool. Make sure you're on the, the design layer or whatever layer above that. And I'm going to press the rectangle tool, which the shortcut is M. I'm going to hold Alt and left click once. And you'll get this box pop up. And what we're going to do, we want to make sure that this width and height is the same. So we're going to, I'm going to go 200 by 200 because we want to keep the icon consistent. And I'll put the stroke on, uh, maybe two points, as you can see here. And we just want to make sure, you know, line it up roughly where the, the center is. The, sh the sh paths are not going to go outside this square anyway. So cool, we have that. And I'm going to lock this by pressing Control 2. So we lock that box. What I'm going to do now, you can see my Smart Guides are turned on. You can go to View, Smart Guides, and just turn that on. And I'm going to press P for the pen tool, and I'm going to make a line for a guide. So I'm going to left click once, holding shift, I'm going to left click down the bottom there. Select this line and press Control 5. And make sure you, I'm going to turn my guides on by pressing Control semicolon. And you can see now I can see this guide here. We're going to use it because we're going to make this icon symmetrical. So it doesn't matter if the photo is on an angle or a bit wonky. We'll do one side of the face and just copy it or duplicate it on the other side. And that's how you'll get a symmetrical icon. So I'm going to press P for the pen tool. If you don't know how to use the pen tool, I have another tutorial that you can watch. Um, just look in the Adobe Illustrator Tutorials playlist. And you can check it out there. So I'm going to start with a nice black stroke. I'll go with two points and I'll start to trace all these parts. So I'm going to left click and then clicking and dragging, you can see you get these nice curves. You can also hold Alt to Option and move this handle like that so we can curve it downwards in a nice motion. So that's cool. And we're going to leave this stroke open because we're going to join them later on. I'll do the mouth as well. And don't worry about being perfect because you can always edit it and change it later. You can hold shift as well to keep the proportions on a 45 degree angle or 90 degree angle, which makes the line nice and straight. A bit smaller. Cool, that's looking good. We'll put a line here for the snout. So it gives the illusion, you know, that it's going up. It's like that. I kind of like how this dog has like a pattern on the top here on his jacket, on the fur. You can see that's pretty cool. So maybe I can add like a little mask type of style on the top there or a path and it makes it look like a color, big color on top, his head. I'll work with the eye as well. You know, try and keep the anchor points as minimal as possible to get the best curves. And then I'll just press L for the ellipse tool and just do a circle like that for the eyeball. 
but I'll make the circle a fill. So you can press Shift X to switch from a stroke to a fill. And that kind of looks good. I think the eyes are a bit too big, so I'll just scale it, select it and scale it. And you can see how my strokes, they're not all the same size. You can see how it's scaling down because I've moved them around. You want to make sure that you select it all. And then you go up to top and press 2 for the strokes. Or whatever stroke you can be, 4, whatever you want. I kind of like between 2, and th two 3, and 4 is the best. So I'll leave it on, I'll leave it on 3 for now. But you just want to make, make sure it's consistent. I'll start to do the ear as well now. And you can see how the ear sort of overlaps his head. That's totally cool. Because we can edit that later. So now you can see that side's done. I'm going to select it all and go to my stroke panel. If you go to window and go down to stroke on the bottom down on here, click that, you'll get this box pop up. And what I want to do, I want to round these spiky bits. I prefer to always do this style. So you can see the corner, the caps, we want to make it a round cap. And the corners, we want to make it a round corner. So it just rounds off all those nice paths, it makes it round, which is what I like to do. So I'll select everything, press O for the reflect tool. It's also located on the left here, next to the rotate. You just right click and it opens that menu. I'm gonna find the center point where I've added a point or on the line, as you can see there. I'm gonna hold Alt, left click once and you'll get the reflect tool box up. We wanna click vertical and you can leave preview on and just press copy. So what's that? What it's going to do now is going to copy that same half on the other side. So if I just turn off my guide there, you can see that it's all symmetrical now. But there's one more thing we have to do. I'm just going to turn that guide off. You can see how these paths are not joined yet. You can see it's disconnected. So what we have to do is to select it, go to Object, Path, and Join. And now it should join as one, as you can see there. The shortcut is Control J or Command J. So I'll use the direct selection tool, which is the white mouse button. The shortcut is A. And then I'll just go through and just join them all this middle section up. So it becomes all one. And sometimes it doesn't work when you do the shortcut. So make sure, you know, you, just, you can just go to object path and join it if it doesn't work. And then I'm going to round off that nose because it's a bit too pointy. Round that off, that off bit. So you can see there all the shapes and the lines and the paths. Cool. So once you've you're done with that, I'm gonna select it and duplicate it by holding Alt and Shift, just dragging it across. We can leave the box. That's totally cool. That's only just for consistency when we're working with other icons. So you wanna make sure you choose a nice color palette that's sort of monochromatic. It looks best. You can go to Adobe Color. You can see I have a library full. And I'm just using this nice purpley brown tones, which looks kind of cool. And you can go to other sites as well, like Color Hunt, to get some colors too. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start off with just changing the stroke color. So I'm going to select it all. Press X to make sure it's on the stroke, and I'm going to select the dark. When you're working with strokes, you it looks always better when it's a darker stroke. So it gives the outline of the shape or the character that you're trying to highlight. So always make sure the stroke is darker. And I'm just going to select the fill on this eyeball and make sure that it's the same color. So that's looking cool. You can also make this nose bit as well. I'm going to press Shift X and we can make that full like that too. Cool. That looks good. So now what we're going to do, we've got to sort of clean this up. But you can see if we add a color and we bring this on top, You can see that it's going to cover that anyway, which looks nice. So what you want to do, you want to make sure the shape is on top. So you go to Object, Arrange, Bring to Front. We also want to do the same with this other E, bring it to the front. Bring to front, and we can just select this same color like that. And you can see how it covers that line, which is totally cool. And I'll just quickly copy it in case we need to edit. So now, in order to color these parts here, there's a few ways you can do it. But another easy way is that if you just select it all, 
you can press Shift M and you can actually just left click and color in. It's going to turn all this spacing into shapes. You got to make sure that your paths are all like interlocking with each other or it's not going to work properly. So what I'm going to do is start to color in some of these spots. Sometimes other ways I like to do it is make a copy of the stroke and then keep it on its own layer and then I'll color under it with just fills separately. But it just depends, you know, you can there's different workflows for everything. And I'll make this make sure you're changing the fills. I'm going to make this brown. I'm going to make this lighter. So you can see now what it's done, it's actually turned this into a shape. So it has a fill. I can turn the fill off. I can turn the stroke off like that. The only issue sometimes with the shape builder tool, you can see it makes more anchor points. You can see it's added sort of sometimes adds like extra anchor points that we don't want. So that's why it's good to do the other way. You can see here it's also, see it's added these anchor points, which messed it up. But that's totally cool. We're just doing a quick icon today. Um, so what I'm going to do is select this. And I'm going to my color guide. You can see here, I'm going to left click on this, this, make sure that this color is selected, this light color. And I'm just going to select a lighter tone. It's too light. Just to make the snout stand out a bit more. Just like that. And there you have it. I can select it, press Control G to group it. And then you can go maybe put it on a background, see what it looks like. And you can test different backgrounds. That looks kind of cool, but his eyes look messed up. So we'll leave it on this lighter background and then I'll choose a lighter tone like we did before just so it's not completely white, it's off-white. And there we have it, we've got our cool icon. You can go ahead and make some different type of dogs, you know, keep it simple, find a good reference image, use a nice color palette and your icon will come out and stand out. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Click subscribe for more design tutorials and content. And don't forget to leave a comment, let me know what you wanna see, what you wanna learn, and I'll be happy to teach you guys. So yeah, have a good day.